Good morning. Good morning, church. I love it. How are you guys doing this morning? You guys doing blessed? You guys doing wonderful? Y'all had a good Christmas? I hope y'all did. Hope you had a happiest of holidays. You know, I know a lot. There's a lot of you that uh, there's a lot here, not here, because of the holidays, and that's okay. If they're tuning into the live stream, bless them, Lord. For all of you, double portion blessing for being here. No, <laughs> no, no, double portion for everybody. Amen. Uh, it's uh, so. My name is Pastor Juan, or Juan. Uh, I am filling in for Pastor Sean, who's a bit under the weather at the moment. So please keep him and Pastor K in your prayers uh, as we uh, move forward today, as we move forward through this week. Uh, do we have any guests, any first timers? I don't. Oh, welcome. Thank you guys for showing up. That's awesome. Praise Jesus. We have a gift for you. Um, Lenny, will you be able to be away? Oh, is Lenny back there? Um, Huh? Okay. Patty, would you be able to give them their gift? Your gift is a, a coffee mug, Hope Chapel. And thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. Uh, so again, I'm filling in. And uh, as Justin said earlier, this is the last Sunday of the year. 2020 is coming to a close. And may it never come back to haunt us ever again in the name of Jesus. <laughs> But with that being said, that 2020 is beginning. And uh, I wanted to share a message that as we walk into 21 would be an encouragement for us. Uh, 2021 uh, is, uh, is a new year. Uh, you know, and we pray for new seasons in our lives. We pray for new things in our life. We pray for new life in Jesus. Amen. And uh, as we're closing uh, 2020, uh, one of these things that happens, you know, a lot of us do these things every year. We call them broken promises. I mean, resolutions. Uh, resolutions, forgive me. Uh, we make these plans, these goals. We make these uh, moments that they are things we want to achieve or things that we want to change or, or, or things we want to do, you know, maybe somebody like travel plans or, you know, it could be anything, weight loss. It could be, oh, I just want to be a nicer human being to some people because sometimes they, people drive our patients, whatever it may be. Uh, I, I'm not against six-month goals or three-month goals, but I think a lot of times we can focus so much on the future that we can forget that we're living in today. In the same way, we can focus so much, we can dwell on our past, that it prevents us from living in our today. And so as I was sitting here uh, and thinking about what it is that God wanted to share this morning and uh, what God really was going to speak to me, because I needed to hear this because I had forgotten. I had been looking so much to the future and dwelling so much on all the things 2020 has taken away from us uh, that or, or 2020 has just rid us of normalcy, has rid us of a lot of things that we had become so comfortable with, that we had become so familiar with. And so it shook everything up. And dwelling on that has also prevented us from moving forward, has prevented us from uh, figuring out how to move forward. I mean, now we're, hey, it's, what is it? Mar March is when it started, and we're, we're getting the swing of things. We're learning how to uh, navigate some of these uh, uh, precautions, these laws. And, and again, if you know some healthcare workers, love them generously because the ratios and the numbers are crazy right now and they are working their butts off and I'm so thankful for the nurses and the medical workers that I know so I uh, appreciate them but even I know that in them they would be like man I would let's get back you know let's not uh, have just this crazy rampant number of just influx of work and having way too many patients that aren't getting adequate care and whatnot. And we want them to have adequate care. We want, we want people to be healed. And we know that God, it says in, in uh, Isaiah, by the stripes on his back, that we're healed. So we're just going to contend for that, especially in 2021 as we're moving forward, as we, we're trying to figure out these government mandates, these state mandates, God, that, that we would contend that God would start to heal, that God would start to raise up. And uh, 
So the, the, this message is a, uh, it's titled, Today is the Day. Today is the day. Because ultimately, tomorrow is not promised, and yesterday has already happened. And, and yesterday can come with its, its, its own burdens, and we got to learn to let those go. And tomorrow comes with uncertainty, so we have to cast away that fear. But today is the day that we can live for the Lord. Today is the day that God will still move in our lives. Today is the day that God can rid us of our shame and pain. Today is the day that God can bring new faith and new healing and new life. Today is the day that God can just shift our perspective. That we, we don't have to look too far into the future or we don't have to look too far into our past to realize that all we got is today. There's a song that I've been listening to. This song I've been listening to has been on repeat, uh, one, because I'm practicing it. I may be singing it with Megan in the future, maybe not. You know, it depends on how I get the song. But it, it, it just is an encouragement to me. It's called This Is A Move. And one of the, one of the lines that gets me is, uh, bodies are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. And I, I got to hang on to that. I need to know that today that God is still raising people from the dead. God is still speaking life, and and the dry bones are rising up. God God is still slaying giants in my life. In, In Scripture, it tells us that if we have faith like a mustard seed, that he will move mountains in our life. And and are we having that type of faith on a day-to-day basis? Are we having that type of faith where we're saying, God, right now, hey, I can't see my tomorrow. And yesterday hurt really bad, but today you can move that mountain out of my life. You can slay that giant that's been lingering, trying to bully me into submission. That we have to know that today is the day that God can move in our life. Amen. Can I start off with some prayer? Come on, bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord, we thank you for each and every single person here. God, that their families uh, and and everybody represented, Lord. God, that you would uh, bless them. God, that this word would be encouraging to them. God, that uh, it would shift. and, And if we need conviction, God, give us conviction. If we need healing, give us healing, God, through this word, through your word, God. If we need a strongholds and generational curses ripped out of our life, take them out, Lord. For where you speak life and you speak death, speak life into the things that we need of you, that daily bread. Speak death into the things that are not of you in our lives, Lord. And that's what we are praying for. This is what we're contending for today. And we thank you. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, church. Can I start off with a testimony after prayer? Come on. So for those, a testimony is like just God doing something amazing. This is how I know God is so good. Even when I forget he's good sometimes, and I shouldn't forget it, but sometimes I need to be reminded of it. A few days ago, my grandma called, not, not my, my biological grandma, my spiritual grandma, uh, my best friend's uh, grandma. She called me and she said, she said, mijo, I want you to come baptize me right now. And I was like, if I didn't have food poisoning, I'd be there right now. I unfortunately have food poisoning. Uh, I ate something bad, and it was not good. (laughs) And, um, but she called me, she's like, I want to get baptized. And I'm like, I'm like, Grandma, like, you you read your Bible, I hear you, you watching Andy Stanley. Like, I know you in the Word, you haven't been baptized. She's like, nope, I was baptized as a baby. I was born and raised Catholic. And I was like... Oh, okay. Yeah, let's, yeah, we'll have to set it up. And I was, you know, isolating. And uh, you know what's crazy is that that call came out of nowhere. I wasn't feeling well. I was in and out. I was, I was drinking my, my emergency, some zinc, my daily vitamins, because uh, I was, you know, just some food poisoning, you know. Hey, sometimes you just got to let certain things that have been sitting in the fridge go. And I learned that lesson. I learned it. <laughs> you, know, you know when you open up something and you're like, mm, this smells kind of okay. You, that's, that's when you know, throw it away. <laughs> it's just me and a couple other guys in the house, you know. And, uh, hey, we're learning, okay? <laughs> 
And, uh, but, it, you know, just sitting there and I was watching The Mandalorian. Don't spoil anything. I'm only on, like, episode three. Um, and uh, so I'm sitting there and I got that phone call. And it was so encouraging to me, you know, because uh, I see them periodically, maybe three, four times a year. I used to pick up Grandpa, Grandpa Henry, uh, from Barstow, like uh, three, four times a year because he visits his kids. And uh, at Ronnie's in the house, and Ronnie actually helped me pick him up one time, man. I remember, thank you. <laughs> it, was, it was such a simple thing, and, and, and it reminded me that, it's in, it, that God is still moving even when we don't see it. That God is still working, even when we don't feel it. That he is present. And in the same way, we should learn to be present. So, of course, you know, so yesterday she called me, and she's like, how you feeling? I'm like, I'm feeling much better. She's like, all right, drive over here right now. I'm praying that the devil does not stop you in any way. She's like, come baptize me. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so I drove, and I got to spend some time. Uh, with them and, 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 and the kids, and I, I, I got to baptize her in, in a bathtub. You know, I got to baptize her in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and it just, again, something as simple as that. You know, sometimes we're at home or sometimes we're out and about, and it just seems like a normal thing. Maybe we're at the grocery store socially distanced, grabbing our milk and cookies, you know, because Santa, Santa was, you know, uh, and we, we're doing those things, and we forget that God is still working. I think one of the things I needed to be reminded is that I had, I had started revolving. My, no, I, I had Jesus revolving around my life instead of me revolving my life around Jesus. And that, that was the, the, seg, the starting point. Today is the day that I will, that I will trust God better. Today is the day that I will see Jesus move in the small, that I will see Jesus move in the big, that I will see Jesus move in the daily, in the mundane. We think a move of God has to be extravagant, and don't get me wrong, I'm going to contend for big things. I want to see dry bones raised. I want to see people delivered. I want to see people freed from uh, depression, freed from pain. I want, yes, I am contending, and God is still doing that. God is still raising, but God is also in the simple. God is still in the simple faithful prayer of a grandma. God is still in the, uh, the uh, simple prayer the, in the faith of a small child. That God is present in all those things. That God is still moving. A lot of times we think that God has got to give us a fish sandwich when he says, I'm going to give you the daily bread. The God is, we, and don't get me wrong, sometimes he blesses us with a fish sandwich. Amen. I'm grateful. And for those of you who have uh, gotten sick these past few weeks and your taste has been robbed from you, I'm sorry. I would never want to go through that. I loved, I had cheesecake yesterday. You telling me I, there is a possibility I can't taste cheesecake? Nope. It's not how it works, okay? Jesus made food to be enjoyed. Besides the point, back to the sermon. I, I digress. <laughs> the, God is still moving, and he ain't stopped. God is still present. And he's there. We just got to be aware. I want to pick up in a passage of Scripture that, that really just kind of demonstrates the simplicity of this. And it's a, it's a funny thing, but it's, it's towards the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So he had just been announced. He just got baptized. The sky was cracked open. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And God, the Father, said to his son, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. Well, Jesus needed a, a gang of people to do ministry with. So he started calling some people. So let's pick up. Matthew chapter 4, verse 18. It says, while walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. They were fishermen. And he said to me, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. I want to stop right there. Don't stop. I, I'm, an, I'm an imaginative person. I love painting the story of what's taking place in Scripture in my head. So I want you to picture this with me. 
Jesus is on, uh, on, the, he's on the beach front of the Sea of Galilee. You know, sand, maybe a little bit of dirt. He's walking, and there's these guys. They're fishing out in the water. They're throwing their net. You got Peter and Andrew. And Jesus yells out to them. And so just imagine a man, on the, he's yelling out, and they're out, out in the water. He says, hey, I see that you guys are fishermen, but I want to make you fisher of men. Follow me. I want you to follow me. And they, they, they immediately stop what they're doing and say, you know what? I'm going to follow them. I'm going to follow that man that's calling us out, this stranger. Now, when we sit here, you know, if someone did that to us today, I'd be like, Nah, man, I'm a, <laughs> that's how I end up on the side of a milk carton. We're not doing this. But, uh, of course, they're dealing with God. So there's, there's this uh, magnetizing uh, personality. There's, they know looking at him that he is different, that their lives would be changed making this decision. And so they do it. And what's interesting is their, their value was given to them. So they, they were fishermen, right? Back then, uh, statuses were, were a very important thing in society, uh, in society. So their roles as fishermen are, they're, they're, um, it's what they do. People know them as fishermen. If a person looked at them and was like, hey, you're a fisherman. Did you catch fish? No, I don't want to work with you. If they're fishermen, they catch fish and be Oh, I buy fish from you so I can feed my family. So, I mean, it's kind of like a simple way to look at how they were uh, portrayed. But again, it was their value. And they were fishing, and they're not catching anything. And that's not good when your livelihood is staked upon what you catch. So they, they, they gave up what valued them. And I think when I'm, when I'm reading this scripture, for me, it's like when we look into the future, when we start to do things and we start to, to, to ponder, it's like, if I achieve this, or if I get this, or if I make this, then this can, I can secure for the youngsters, I, I can secure the bag. I, I, can, I can make the money, I can be fine. If, if uh, Peter and Andrew catch a lot of fish, sell it, then they're set for a little while. Then they got to catch some more fish, right? And they, they, they focus too much on what they might have in the future. And, and then Jesus calls to them and says, you know what? Just follow me. And I think when, we, when we're sitting here and we wake up in the morning and we start to think, uh, I got to do this but tomorrow, Wednesday. I got to do this six months from now. Man, so-and-so's birthday is, it just happened yesterday, but it's coming next year. I got to prepare. It's, we, we start to get worrisome. We look to the future with uncertainty. We look with fear. And what Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 6 is do not worry about tomorrow. Who can add an hour to the day by worrying about tomorrow? So for today has its own struggles. God is saying, look, I'm not, I'm not opposed to five-year plans. I'm not opposed to three-month goals. I'm not. But if that's all you're thinking about, eventually you're going to get to that three-month plan and realize if, that I didn't focus on my today and make a single step towards that goal. See, today is the only thing that we're promised. God has gifted us with today. So are we trusting God in today? Are we being present with today? Let's continue. This is, this is verse 20. It says, immediately they left their nets and followed him. And then going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father. Mending their nets, he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. So now Jesus, Peter, and Andrew are now walking on the beach a little further up, and then he, he finds two other guys, James and John, okay? And, J and James and John are with their dad. And Jesus says, hey, follow me. And so what's interesting is James and John are repairing their nets. So they're fishermen too, but they ain't got no nets to fish with. 
And as I, was, as I was reading, I was thinking about past mistakes. Maybe, maybe there was a lack of care or, or tending to their nets. Or maybe they tried to do something too big uh, and they tried to catch way too many fish and their, their, their nets snapped. So now they can't even think about their future because they're dwelling on the mistake they've made. They're, they're, they're dwelling on this uh, broken net. They're trying to repair the mistake they have made. They're mending it. And Jesus says, look, look, follow me. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to let this net go. And how many of us in, in times that we can't, we can't even function in our today because we're, de- we're, we're dealing and we're dwelling with the things that have haunted us from uh, uh, the past. We're dwelling on those things that, or those mistakes or the things we should have done, the things we should have said, the, the I love yous we didn't get to, and we dwell and it, it, it imprisons us from living in our today, taking a chance today to be better than we were yesterday. Here's the thing. It, it says James and John left their nets. You know who else they left? Their dad. Now, I, I love my dad. I love my father. He, he is one of the, the main things that has helped develop me as a man. He is... He, He has protected me. He kept me safe. He provided for my family. My dad is awesome. I love my dad. My dad is also comfort. He's he's, 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 he's familiarity. He's routine. And I remember when I had to move out, I now, I didn't have the protection of my father anymore. I think sometimes when when we're living in our today, God is saying you got to let go of some comfort. You got to let go of some, some familiarity. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You, you can't stand on your understanding. You got to lean on his as you're moving forward. And that, as I was sitting here, I was like, man, what a difficult decision, but yet they made it. I mean, it seems like they made it pretty easily. But again, they're dealing, they're, man, they, they were dealing with God himself. But it's, it, it tells us in the Bible you know, when he, Jesus was, uh, re- appeared to Thomas, he said, you believe because you have seen, but blessed are those who believe and have not yet seen. So how much more is our faith worth? Because, yes, we know Jesus is risen. Yes, we, but, I, you know, I can't remember the last time I saw Jesus out, out and about. Not saying that he's not out and about. So to have that faith, that we are blessed because of that faith. So today is the day. Today is the day to make, we can make that decision. We, we, can, we don't have to be anxious about our future, and we don't have to dwell on our past. Today is the day. Today is the day that it can be better. You know, it's crazy is these, these men follow Jesus, right? And that didn't stop them from not understanding. That didn't stop them from still struggling. Heck, a few, few days later, they feed 5,000. They feed 5,000 people, right? And at the beginning of it, Jesus is like, hey, gather the crowds, and we're going to feed them. And one of them's like, we, we don't got money. One of them's like, hey, we, we don't have the resource. We're lacking. And Jesus is just, trust me. Go, go gather what you can, and we'll, I'll give, we'll make it work. And, you know, and you know what's crazy is even though they, they had just said very logical things, we don't have the money, there's not enough food, everybody's hungry, like, very logical things. The supply was not there, but the demand was. And yet, Jesus just said, go get something. Go find something. It'll, it'll be enough. And they're like, all right. We don't. I think we function. Sometimes we, our faith functions based out of our lack. And we shouldn't. Faith should never function out of what we don't have or, or what we might need Our faith should be like, even if I don't have, even if I don't have what I need, that God is still going to provide the bread. 
that daily bread, that God is still going to be my provider. And we don't follow him because he's the provider or because he's going to give us provision. We follow him because he is the blesser. Like, he is the king of the universe. He, does, he paid that price. And we have to trust him in the same way the disciples. And again, when I, I paint that story in my head, when I, I paint that story in my head, I would be like, yo, Jesus, the fridge is empty. <laughs> we ain't got enough instant mashed potato to make this work. But God is saying, trust me. And I, I, when, when we look at our today, again, just let's take it back to the, my grandma. I, I was sitting there, not feeling well, watching The Mandalorian. And she called me and, and said, I want to be back. That day, like, I was encouraged. Like, I was watching God move. I was listening to my grandma to share the, the conviction of God. And it was encouraging me. Like that, we, we, our faith doesn't have to be extravagant. And, and when we're lacking the, our move, when we're seeing God move, it doesn't have to be amazing or special. Maybe today, when we wake up, when we say today is the day, maybe it's a phone call. Maybe God has placed somebody on your heart to reach out to. Maybe, maybe God, maybe you're at the grocery store and God is saying, hey, bless this person. Maybe you're at the drive through purchases people's food behind you. Maybe it's, it's a simple a prayer. Maybe there's somebody that, that you, you have been harboring bitterness or, or something or unforgiveness. And today is the day, God, I'm going to let that go. Today is the day, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch you move in the small. Today is the day, God, I'm going to pray and call that person that you've been telling me to. Today, it's not, we don't have to complicate faith. Hey, follow me. All right. It's, it's willingness. Willingness to trust the will of God in our life. Did, Jesus, did, did James and John and Peter and Andrew know that they were going to go on probably the wildest journey, adventure, that any humans on planet Earth would probably go on? Probably not. Did they know they were going to get persecuted, kicked out of towns, threatened? Probably not. Did they witness 5,000 get, people get fed? Did they, wit, did they witness God? Uh, Lazarus get pulled out of the tomb? They probably didn't know that those things were going to happen. Were they going to see lame people walk? They didn't know. But they trusted God every day and watched him move. There's one, one more portion of scripture that I want to uh, talk about. See, later on, Jesus in his ministry, he, he, uh, he has a last supper with them. So he's breaking bread with them, and there's this interesting part. I'm going to have Justin come on up. He's going to play the guitar because I want to get sentimental and emotional. <laughs> John, the beloved, some of the disciples are actually upset with him <laughs> because John is leaning on the chest of Jesus. And so while this is happening, John is listening to Jesus, and Jesus is saying, this is my cup, this, is my, this, this represents my blood, it's going to be poured out. He says, this is, my, this is some bread, it represents my body that's going to be broken. He says, I'm, I'm going to die, guys. And Peter, Peter jumps up, he's gung-ho, he says, well, I'm going to die with you. <laughs> I, they ain't nobody go touch a hair on your head unless they touch my hair too. Make me bald. <laughs> so gung ho about his faith, and then what does Jesus say to him? He says, Before the rooster crows three times, you're going to deny me. 
Before the rooster crows twice, you're going to deny me three times. While all this is taking place, you have John the Beloved who's leaning into his Savior. See, John had it right. See, what Jesus was saying, yes, he's talking about his forthcoming death. And Peter's like, well, I'm going to be there with you in that tomorrow. Yet John was saying, I don't care about that tomorrow. My Savior is right here, right now. God is present right here, right now in our lives. Today is the day. See, John was saying, today is the day I get to spend with my Savior. Yeah, this might be our last meal together, but today is that day. Today is the day that we can, we can be present and watch God do the wonders We can watch God move the mountains in our lives. We can watch God slay the giants. We can also watch God help us call people that we ain't talked to in a long time. We can also watch God help us rid ourselves of the burden of our past, the shackles of our imprisonments, the, the pain, the regret. The missed chances of I love yous, the, mis the mistakes of broken nets. We can also see him work. We, we don't have to worry or try and understand what our tomorrow will look like. We don't have to sit here and worry. Know that God is on the throne, that we can be present in our today. Let's stand up. Let's, let's pray. I want to pray with you guys. I want to pray that because I know some of us are here and there's, there's things in our past that we're dwelling on that's preventing us from taking hold of what today has to offer in the will of God. And then I know there's some of us who are, who are so worried about tomorrow. And don't get me wrong. You probably have the right to. But finan finances are weird. Some of us might not have work right now. The stimulus, there's a lot of just things, that variables that yes, but we have a God who says, pray like this. That just as it is in heaven, it will be on earth. And I will give you your daily bread. Forgive those who trespass against you. Forgive your debtors so that your debts can be forgiven too. That we hold true to that promise that he will give us that bread. And sometimes it might just be a loaf of bread. If that's you, we're going to bow our heads, we're going to close our eyes. Just raise your hand. And, and for those of you at home, in your living rooms, wherever you're at, if, you, if your kitchen, make, make some good breakfast. Wherever you're at. If you know there's some things that are preventing you from realizing that today is the day that can be before God, with God, that can be better for God, that you can do better than you were yesterday, just raise your hand and we're going to pray to let go of those things, let go of those things that are harboring against us. Bow your heads closed. If that's you, just raise your hand and we're going to pray. We're going to pray. God, we thank you. We thank you that you are a good, good father. That we can lean back into your loving arms. That our faith doesn't have to be gung-ho or spectacular. It can be simple and present, just like John the Beloved. That our decision to trust you every, more, every morning, that, that, that gift of that day that you have given us could be as simple as those days as simple as the way the disciples chose to follow you, Lord. That it'd be that easy for us. That it would be that easy for us to let go of our past. And it would be that easy for us to give you our future. 
to trust that it is in your hands and that your will is better than anything we could ever hope for or imagine. God, we thank you that, that even when we are faithless, you are still faithful, Lord. God, I thank you for each and every single person here, Lord. You see their hearts. You see their conviction. You see their needs, Lord. And I know that in Scripture it says that you, we can cast our burdens upon you, that you will incline your ear to the contrite spirit, that, God, you hear our hearts and you will meet us right where we're at, for you are present with us. That when we are weeping, you weep with us. When we are rejoicing, you rejoice with us, God. When we try and walk out of the boat and we sink into the water, there you are to pull us out. When we feel like we ain't catching fish, there you are with a fish lunch on the beach. To feed us to meet us, to hold us, Lord. God, we thank you and we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody says amen, amen. <laughs>